Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to Sew Custom. Today's video is how I sewed up this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, this is, I think, a cotton in this beautiful blue and white stripe. Has this gorgeous embroidered border, top and bottom. Has a little bit of structure with it, quite lightweight. Good for a project like this and on to the cutting out. This is my front and back pattern piece. My fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch on the fold line at the bottom and two really important notches at the side seam. One to indicate my fold line, which will allow me to add a little frill at the top. And the second to indicate my first shearing line. And this leads me on to my first bit of prep work here and that is to fold on that second notch and give myself a nice crease line the whole way across. And as I mentioned, this is just going to indicate where I need to place my first shearing line. So for the shearing, I need some elastic. The one I'm using here is standard. It's from Hemline brand and I'm just winding it onto my bobbin trying to make sure I'm not putting any tension in the elastic at this stage. So that's that all done. And now when I'm loading this into the machine, I'm making sure that I'm not pulling the elastic the whole way round and cutting off the end as I would with regular thread. I'm just putting a bit of tension on the elastic and making sure it's caught just at the top there. Pulling the elastic through to the top of the machine and ready to shear using a little bit of a longer stitch length and lining up that crease line right in the center of my foot and using a straight stitch, running it the whole way along. And I'm taking this super slowly. If my stitches go wonky at this stage, all of my lines of shearing will be wonky. So this is the most important line. So as I say, taking my time nice and gentle. And then when I get to the end, snipping my threads with the scissors rather than cutting them on the machine. This will make sure I don't lose my elastic for my next line. And that's how that looks. So now for the second. So I'm lining up that first line with the edge of my foot. My needle is all the way over to the left and I'm just stitching straight across, trying to make sure this time that the edge of my foot is lined up with that first line as accurately as I can get it. So that's how that looks. So I'm just going to continue on here, following exactly the same method. So now I've just got to about halfway down my fabric. I've had a check at my bobbin and I can see that I'm not going to have enough elastic to allow me to sew one more line. So rather than attempt to make a join in the center, I'm just going to wind another bobbin and continue. And if you're interested in how much elastic I used for this little top, I used two bobbins for each side and that got me 12 lines of shearing. So I'm just finishing here my 12th line very happy with this. So now to add a little bit of steam. So I'm just hovering my iron over the top of the elastic and you can see here what this is doing is just shrinking down the fabric and setting those stitch lines in place. So I'll leave that to dry and while I'm doing that I'll repeat that entire process for the back and now the next step is to join these two pieces together at the side seam. So I'm making sure my shearing lines are matched up at each side and ready to sew. Using a regular stitch length here, starting with a back stitch, sewing at my one centimeter seam allowance and finishing with a back stitch. And of course I'll do exactly the same on the other side. I've ran my edges through the overlocker and pressed. 
and while I was there I also ran that top edge through it just to tidy it up. So now this piece is ready for straps. I have two layers of folded fabric underneath my pattern piece. And just like the front and back before, I'm cutting this out twice. So now to assemble my straps, I'm just laying my fabric right sides together and I'm going to stitch from the top at a bit of an angle and then straight down the side. So I just need to trim my corners and pull everything through to the right side. a large knitting needle here to help me out. Making sure I've got a nice point at the top. And once that's had a good press, this is how it looks. And of course I've repeated that for all four straps. So I have a couple of notches at the top to indicate where my strap should go. So I'm just lining them up here with those notches, folding that overlocked edge over the top and I'm going to stitch the whole way around incorporating the straps as I go. So I'm just folding my top edge, lining it up with the first line of elastic, just getting to those first strap notches sandwiching that strap in between and stitching over the top. And I'm just going to continue the whole way around, adding in my strap each time I come to my notches. And when I get back to my starting position, I'm going to leave myself a little gap as I'm going to add some more elastic there, but you'll see that in a second. So that just needs a really good press. And this is how it looks. So now to secure my straps in place and add a channel for that elastic I mentioned, I need to run one more line of stitches. So I'm just pulling that strap up to the top and pinning it into place. This will just give me a nice neat finish on the inside and ready to sew. And this time lining the edge of my foot up with that last line of stitches you've just seen me sew. My needle is all the way over to the right. Starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that's my straps all in place, my channel for my elastic ready, and this time the elastic I'm using is slightly different, so it's a little bit stronger than the shearing elastic, and it will just hold its shape a little bit better and make this top quite secure. So I've just threaded some strong thread along one end, tied that onto a darning needle and here just feeding it through that channel. I'll finish that off camera. So I've just pinned those two ends together and now they're ready for a zigzag stitch just to close them up. So that's that done. So now the last thing to do to finish the top anyway is to close up that little gap. So just running a straight stitch right over the top, starting and finishing with a back stitch. So that just needs a final press and 
this is how it looks. Happy with that. So that completes the upper part of this little top. So now this is ready for the peplum. So my fabric underneath is on the fold. I have a notch at the top on the fold line and I'm using as much of the embroidery here as I can. And just like all my previous pieces, I'm cutting this piece out twice. So the first thing to do here is to join these two pieces together at the side seam. Stitching at my one centimeter seam alliance, starting and finishing with a back stitch. I've ran my edges through the overlocker and pressed those seams flat. And now that that's done, this piece is ready to be added to my top. So I'm popping my bodice in through the peplum so that my fabric is right sides together, lining up my edges, lining up my notches and pinning into place. in a few more pins off camera and ready to sew. So I'm lining the edge of my foot up with that last line of elastic. My needle is all the way over to the right using a regular stitch length sewing the whole way around. I just need to finish my edges and press and now the very last thing to do is to create another channel for some of that stronger elastic. So I've pressed that seam towards the peplum and here I've just lined the edge of my foot up with that last line of stitching. My needle is all the way over to the left this time, just following that the whole way around and when I get to the end leaving myself the same little gap as before. So that's my channel all created and as I mentioned I'm using that same strong elastic as I used on the top. I've prepped it in exactly the same way using the darning needle here to feed everything through. I've ran a zigzag stitch over the top to close up the elastic. Then closed up my channel both off camera and this is the result. It's had a press. And with that, this little top is complete. So I've got that little frill right at the top of the bodice. I've got that stronger elastic in my channel just underneath the frill. That gorgeous shearing right across the bodice. I've got my ties all in place. That same stronger elastic connecting the bodice and peplum together. And then that beautiful embroidery along the bottom. And this is what it looks like on the mannequin. So I'm super happy with how this has turned out. I had this fabric in my stash for such a long time and didn't know what to do with it. And I think this is a very good match. I'm super happy with the shape, with the shearing, with how secure this top is on. Using that stronger elastic at the top and bottom of the shearing makes all of the difference. And as I mentioned in the description box, this is a little test run for something else I'm making. So I'm over the moon with how this has turned out. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you on Friday. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks.